I have always said that a feel guide to feel peace is what we all need. What many people don't know is that there are dozens, maybe hundreds of different kinds of field peas. They're a fascinating legume, versatile and full of personality. Cooks and eaters love them for their flavor and they don't all taste the same. Not all kinds of field peas grow everywhere, but at least one can grow almost anywhere, those perfect little local gems. So it's off to the farm for some field pea 101 with my friend, Jamie Swafford. Hello, hello. Hi, Sherry. How are you? I'm doing well. I, I haven't seen you in ages. I hope you're good. <laughs> I am good. Well, let's talk field peas. Let's talk field peas. Let's go see. Let's go, let's let's go, go walk look. a row and talk a little. Jamie is a former chef turned farmer who grows the most amazing produce, and he's just as skilled in the kitchen as he is on the farm. Right now, we're, we're in Gastonia, North Carolina. We're about 30 minutes outside of uh, Charlotte and um, about 30 minutes outside of Shelby. This is Dogwood Meadows Farm. It's a 230-acre property, and we're growing vegetable production on three-quarters of an acre. So let's go look at some field peas. What have you got growing this year? I have uh, one called Hog Brains. <laughs> I love that. The names on field peas, they sound like <laughs> they're jokes, like somebody lost a bet. These guys get a little yellowish color on them Okay. Uh, when they're ripe. They have a two-tone, I think they call it like orca. Yeah. Yeah, like a whale, like orca. People in the rest of the country, they have never heard of field peas. It's like it's like a secret we're keeping in broad daylight. Yeah. yeah. They think they come in a can. They think they come in a can. My <laughs> stars. I know. You know better than most folks the best way to eat these and serve these. So what's your favorite way to fix this variety? Well, nothing is much better than just a pot of peas in their pot liquor, but I do like this time of year to bring a couple things together from the garden in one pan, and uh, I think we'll do a field pea succotash with these. Oh, that sounds great. If it grows together, it goes together, doesn't That's right. it? All right, let's go to the kitchen. Let's do it. Tell me about this succotash, what you're going to do. What's yours today? So today is a field pea succotash. The succotash is a one-pan dish. Uh, back in restaurant days, we called it a one-pan pickup. We're gonna do field peas with peppers that are straight out of the garden, corn, fresh tomato, and some fresh herbs. And that's about it. Like, we want it nice, light, still lively, and uh, delicious, all those flavors in one pan. That's a whole vegetable plate on every forkful, isn't it? <laughs> The first thing we're gonna start with, uh, normally I would be cooking bacon in here, mm -hmm. uh, but instead I'm just gonna use a little bit of bacon flat to get it started. I'm gonna go ahead and add these onion in mm -hmm. there. That's just a good old onion, just a just chopped a onion. Good okay. Old onion. I always season as I go, just a Absolutely. little bit of salt. Absolutely. That's why people say, doesn't it get too salty? Not if you do it right. So now we're gonna go in with these peppers. These are all sweet peppers. There's some uh, Jimmy Nardello and Corno de Toro. But if someone wanted to keep this meatless, would you recommend butter or oil or a little of both? Whatever your favorite cooking oil is, not expensive olive oil, but canola or grapeseed or whatever you have around, vegetable, and then maybe finish with a little butter at the end. A bacon fat has an even smoke point, whereas butter, if we started this with butter instead of that oil you mentioned, the butter's gonna scorch before everything gets done. Absolutely right. So when these get a little bit of color, uh, at that point, I'm gonna add the peas and the corn that we have at about the same time. And we're gonna use the liquid that we've cooked these peas in as the broth in the dish. So are these fully cooked all the way to tender? These are about 75% cooked. Okay, all right, so you give them a little wiggle room yeah. so they won't go to mush. Yeah. But obviously we can't put raw peas in here because there's not enough liquid and not enough time to take a raw pea to done without all of this just dissolving and disappearing. Exactly. Okay. So all of this, from the time you jump go until you're done, we're talking, what, eight minutes? Yeah, the secret's in the prep, just having everything ready. Um, and, and because when you, when it, when that pan gets hot, it's, it's a moving vehicle. We're getting some colors, like everything's kind of breaking down a little bit. So at this point, I'm gonna add my tomato. Mm -hmm. I have some Air Max, just some fresh thyme that I've pulled mm -hmm. out of the garden. I'm just gonna add a little pepper. And then I think we're there. Isn't that something? 
hot. You know what I love about that? I love that you can taste everything in there. You've got some peas, you've got the acid from the tomatoes, you've got the pop of the corn, you've got that thyme going on, just enough salt and pepper. So every bite is gonna be its own little meal on a spoon. That's good stuff, friend. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.